What is going on, guys? McRaptor here back in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This time we're fighting the Guardian Ape boss in the Sunken Valley. This guy is King Kong with an attitude, and he also looks like Kratos a little bit. I'm not sure what that's about, but regardless, he's a tough boss. And one thing that you can do to make it easier is come in with a firecracker. As you can see here, we just used it. It stunned the boss. It was very helpful. So you've got to make sure that you've got that and plenty of spirit emblems if you want to make phase one a little bit easier. It's not required, but it gives you larger damage windows because, as you can see, he combos so often. Uh, that you have fairly minimal attack windows. Also, he has some unblockable attacks like that sweep attack that you have to jump jump over. Um, but mostly, he's just going to be very aggressive and he's going to do some hit and run tactics on you. See here, he's running away and then he's coming back in with the sweep. He's He'll also jump on the ground here and do some sort of weird fish move and that can hit you multiple times over. Again, the firecracker is helpful. Right there though, he, he does a somewhat rare attack after the firecracker will he'll actually fall on you. So you do have to watch out for that. You can't stand in front after using the firecracker each time. The main thing that you're trying to do in phase, phase one is close the distance on the boss because he's going to reposition so many times. And you just want to make sure that you're up close, up as close as you can be so you're getting those nice deflects in. And then look look at that right here. That's a second unblockable attack in phase one. You gotta watch out for that one. He will grab you and slam you down and do a ton of damage. So you don't want to be in range of that. You just want to dodge out of the way, either right or left. Um, but once you're able to get a couple firecracker cycles through, keep spamming on the guy, you'll get him down. Of course, he will also throw a big pile of shit at you, which gives you a couple seconds to get in there and get some extra damage as well. So. Um, it's a shitty move, but it's good for damage, so no no big deal there. So basically, the only thing that you have to worry about are super aggressive attacks from the boss, two unblockable attacks, and some shit that flies at you. Uh, but if you got the firecracker, it shouldn't be that bad. So that's that's really phase one. You're, you're going to have to spend probably a little bit of time in there, a couple attempts to figure out how all the combos work and the deflect timings. But with the firecracker, it really simplifies and speeds things up. And you're going to want to speed it up because, of course, there is a phase two. I'm not going to lie, the first time I fought this guy, I thought I was done after phase one. And I was very shocked to see this headless guy come up. But nevertheless, it is what it is. You got to fight it. One of the main things that he does in phase two is the scream attack right here, which is incredibly annoying. The more you attack his body, the more he does it. He also does this charge attack at you, which you can barely easily either jump over or you can actually strafe it on the right. This right here, though, is a combo that you really need to learn. This particular sequence here is very, very important. You want to bait in this overhead attack and deflect it to get big damage in. And the way you're able to do that is on his four slash attack, if you deflect either the third or fourth attack, it will force him into this overhead slam. There's a couple other ways that you can do it as well, but that's the main one. He, of course, also has a, an unblockable sweep. And here is the four-hit combo again. See, we deflected the, the third or fourth, but then he goes in, in, into this additional combo. No problem, though. We're still able to deflect enough in order to get him to do the overhead, which is very slow, and the timing is pretty easy to get down, actually. Um, th this At this point, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. You want to st stay at a, about medium range so you're able to run out of the screen if it happens, and you want to get as many deflections on that overhead as you possibly can. Uh, when you're at medium range, he won't do very many attacks. You'll probably only see two or three different combos. He does this one a lot, which you can get at least three hits in before he does the screen. So it's not the best setup, but it works. And you're going to want to just continue playing it safe watching out for those unblockable sweeps, and then wait until he does this four-hit combo, deflecting a little bit better than we did there. See, another deflect, and the overhead deflect, and then he goes into this very scary tantrum occasion that you do have to watch out for. But ultimately, we get that overhead deflection for that big damage. You can usually get about five slashes in on that cycle before you have to run out, because of course, he's gonna scream a lot. If you try to do hit and run tactics on this guy, he's going to scream all the time and it'll be a very long fight. I can't recommend that, although you can do that without deflection. If you just want to run around behind his back and slash a little bit here and there, it'll be a very long fight. One additional thing that we're not doing here, but you can see here coming up on the right, is if you have the spear after the overhead deflect, you can use the spear prosthetic and deal huge posture damage to this guy. And I mean huge. 
two spear cycles and his posture bar will be basically filled. You can do that. Am I recommending it? No, I think it's a little bit cheesy and it might even be patched at some point in the game. And it's a bit of a crutch, I would say. But regardless, it's out there. So if you're having a lot of trouble in phase two, use the spear. But otherwise, forget it exists and just learn how to get those deflection timings down and when you gotta run out of the screens. Phase two actually is, I would say, easier than phase one. It may not be at first because you're gonna have a lot more practice in phase one, but eventually you'll see phase two is actually pretty predictable and pretty short, especially if you get those good deflections in on the overhead. Hopefully this guy was helpful for you guys. If it was, don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one.